The NHS has announced it's so worried about children gambling, it's set up a clinic to help the thousands of kids they believe are hooked. Not that long ago, it was very difficult to gamble. Betting shops only became legal in the 60s, and even after, the state went to some lengths to stop people gambling. I know about this because my grandfather was a compulsive gambler, and if he had a big win, win at the Hackney Dogs, he used to celebrate by getting a taxi home and putting his bike on the top. <laughs> uh, that didn't happen very often. <laughs> Roll on 80 years, and gambling has gone from being a shady pursuit to becoming respectable. It's easy for anyone, including children, to bet online, and bookies are spending at least £1.5 billion a year on marketing to attract punters. The result is record numbers of people gambling and getting into financial problems because of it. Both Tory and Labour governments have played their part in liberalising gambling. But will either party have the nerve to do anything to stop it from damaging our society even more than it already has? Yeah, oh, well, I think the production team has skillfully uh, picked me to respond to you because I am a massive fan of the gambling industry. Are I think, you? Yeah, yeah. I think the billions that they pay in taxes builds untold schools and untold hospitals. And I want to challenge a couple of your lines. It's easy for children to bet online. No, it's, it, it, but it is illegal. Yeah, it is it, illegal. It is, it, so it, and then, but you can. And then you say gam uh, bookmakers pay £3.4 or £3.2 billion pounds to lure punters, not to lure underage punters. Oh this is an industry which, when you go to a bookmaker's, there's actually... So how much do they spend on warning people off when the fun stops? Stop. They put an advert in a newspaper. There's the slogan. You walk past the window. There's a, it would sure. be like pubs saying, if you think you've had one drink too many, please leave immediately, whatever it might be. So, of course, there are issues. This is of grave concern. It is shocking that children of that age are being lured in. But this easy go at the bookmakers, who are seen almost as bad as, I don't know, television presenters or radio presenters, they really are that, that loathsome, is unfair. They try and do it responsibly. They've taken the hit over fob tees, fixed odds betting terminals. That's actually cost over 10,000 stuff. They've taken the hit and they've Which accepted, they didn't want to do. Which they didn't, but they've obviously they've had no choice. Stores have closed. Over 10,000 sure. people have lost their jobs. It never needed to go down to two quid. There was a middle ground, but we're going off the market. So, I think, broadly, it's an incredibly responsible industry. It puts a lot of money in tax, but this has to be addressed. We cannot... Which is no, already illegal. I, I, I don't massively disagree with you. Oh, OK. I, what my argument, uh, I think, um, is that what happens uh, in, in this system is that there are kids who are getting involved, there are people like getting that? involved. Can I give you some of the stats? Yeah, go on. Then. So what you were saying doesn't actually make that much sense in terms what? of the young people saying that they're not um, uh, marketing to young people. They're doing something because the stats at the moment found that in 2018, 14% mm. of 11 to 16-year-olds spent their own money on gambling in the past week. That's approximately 450,000 young people. But they don't specifically target. I'm, I really do need to get that in. The bookmakers okay. don't... They don't have, like, the pictures but, of teddy But there's bears, something or... about that marketing well... that's appealing to these young people. And then, of that, 1.7% of the 11 to 16-year-olds were classified as problem gamblers. That's 55,000. That's horrible. 000. I agree. I, I it's serious. To... I, no, I agree. That's horrible. I, agree. I want to come to your point, because you say that, um, that you know, that they, they, they help and there's... You know, they try to help. Let's hear what Simon Stevens says um, from... He's the, he's, the, you know, he's the chief executive of NHS England. He says, this is an industry that splashes £1.5 billion on marketing and advertising campaigns, much of it now pumped out online and through social media, mm. but it has been spending just a fraction of that helping customers and their families, families deal with the direct consequences of addiction. A levy to fund evidence-based NHS treatment research and education can substantially increase the money available so the taxpayers in the NHS are not left to pick up a huge tab. And that's the point, isn't it? You know, I think... I think in a way, we're, we're all talking about the situation here. The government is going to be very loath to tackle this because it gets two billion quid a year in tax, tax. From, from the gambling industry. It's going to be a brave government that does it. But, you know, the gambling industry has well, to address the problems it causes uh, and it has to help pay for them, well, basically. And that's, and that's what, that's, that's what Simon's talking you about. But surely you come... I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm arguing on your side to an extent. That well, I can have a little rest then. The difficult thing here, the difficult thing here is the rights of the individual versus the, the damage that can be done. You're the one who was always going on about the nanny state. Yeah, what's that got to do with that? We, we have, over the years, we have allowed people to gamble 
in a way that we wouldn't have done well, your 50, party 50, did the Labour 50 party years did. ago. No, yes, I'm not saying no, he did say that. He said, I said that. He both said Labour and Tory. Yes, both governments have, have allowed this. I don't think it's, I don't think governments have got the reluctance because of the tax take. I think the reluctance is about the individual's rights. But but what do you do when you discover actually by giving individuals mm, these rights we're damaging children. You're, you're damaging children yeah. and you're damaging lots of families i completely agree with that and i think you know nick i can see where you're coming from mm. and this isn't necessarily about painting the gambling industry as evil it's about just accepting the reality yeah. that their actions are disproportionately targeting children yeah. Yeah. and the statistics speak for themselves in that respect and i think it's interesting as well to think about how things are changing for that generation alcohol consumption is down mm. tobacco Tobacco consumption is down. Sex Kids is down. Sex is down. <laughs> Kids are not I'm doing like what they did when you grew up, Nick. But they are gambling in growing yeah. numbers. This is something that is affecting young people, and it's mm. a shift in their behaviour. And also, I think we need to think about the psychology of young people. Just listen to what um, Philip Newell, this young man, has to say about the way children think about gambling. Mm -hmm. Kids don't quite understand the persuasive element of gambling advertising. For example, a lot of gambling adverts will, see, will say, here, we're going to give you some free money. Um, now, kids kind of take that claim at face value and they don't properly understand that, you know, when it's the gambling industry saying we're going to give you free money, it's actually they're going to give you free money with various caveats. So they're only going to give you free money if you then gamble with them sufficiently afterwards. And it's quite um, hard for both kids and adults to understand these issues. The regulation that exists is not protecting children from gambling messages that are affecting them in ways that maybe adults can't so anticipate, you, and that has to be addressed. Afwa, what, if we accept that, which I do, yeah. what do we do about it? Yeah. That's, to do that's, something. that's the what question. Do you, what do you do about it? But, it? but do you not think it's interesting that we're hectored 24-7 by the nanny state about what we eat, what we drink, how we drive? And, and yet and the, <laughs> the very thing, there's, there's no censure over gambling. But hold on, we don't blame Sainsbury's Azra or Waitrose for young people drinking. We can. We? No, but we blame well, them for getting no, fat and for giving them bog off offers. But the cigarette industry, we yeah, do. But, yeah, we I do. think you and I are actually almost on the same page because, of course, this is reprehensible. All I'm trying to say is I do think the gambling industry have taken... Can they do more? Of course they can. And I'm sure Sainsbury's and Asda and Waitrose can do oh. more to stop children. Bumping. But it's, it's not as if they just glide, glibly walk away and don't care. No, but they for a do start, care. they spend a phenomenal amount of marketing and a tiny fraction yeah, of that on preventative and, and, yeah. and remedial measures sign. for young stop. people. Right. And actually, they haven't even, the industry day. hasn't even met its own voluntary target for putting money back into services for young people. But it's governments people. that have followed. Successive governments have continually present us with more opportunities to gamble. And on the other hand, they say how terrible it is and how well, terrible the are, consequences to are. To be fair, they Nothing's were arguing about individual responsibility and that you are allowed to do things that previously you weren't allowed to do mm. and the trouble is it's had some effects that we don't like mm. as a society now do we go back and say okay we'll make it less of a less of a free society but because of the damage, or do we just say that's what you have to live with? I don't but, know. But I think the other problem is the fact that the industry or the government hasn't been prepared for the fact that the majority of gambling is now moving online. Mm. So yes. therefore, you yes. do have yes. that anonymity. You know, with the old betting shops, if a young kid walked in, you yeah. could see that was a young kid. Now Absolutely. we don't know who's Absolutely. online. And again, this is the, the whole idea of social media. How on earth? Because they will find a way around it, whatever mm. you do. That's what young people are put on earth to do. Whatever restriction <laughs> you give them, <laughs> they find a way around it. That's, it's a part of, that's the point of being young, isn't it? And that's what the industry will have to wrestle with how they put in well, these How brackets. easy do you make it? That's the real question. How can you make this much more difficult? Don't know. And you know, you're, you're praising the, you know, the gamblers and how good they are. You know, well, I'm supporting. They, well, supporting. OK, OK. But they're, support. literally, it's, for them, it's all about money. Before deregulation, well, before... Well, well, hang on, just... I was gonna is say, this the Carol Malone I've known and loved all these years? Yeah. You suddenly seem We're to have a rather... We're liking this, Carol Malone. They're not doing... They're not doing anything. Is that a boiler suit you're wearing? How dare you? Hold your hand again. You never know. Deregulation. I think the profit in the world banking was about 4.5 billion. Anyway, let me Since stop. Then. Let me stop. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not we like restart, yeah. while she's still on that role. I'll right? Let's see. Yeah. I'm going to reprogram her. Yeah, we're keeping this. I Carol. suspect she'll be back. So she'll I'll be, be back, back. <laughs> shortly. Next debate, the old one will be back. Uh, you're watching the pledge on Sky News. Up after the break, why we could be seeing a dangerous backlash against Me Too.